Hey, what's up everyone? Tag Geek Josh here, back again with a new video. And this time, it's the review of the Alcatel Zip LTE for Total Wireless. Let's get started. So we will go ahead and start by taking a look around the Alcatel Zip. Up front, we see that we have a gray earpiece, which is not found with a lot of these budget-oriented phones. Next to that, we got a front-facing camera. Then at the bottom down there, we see a front-firing speaker, which is pretty cool for a prepaid phone of this caliber. On the left side, we see we don't have anything. While it's on the bottom, we see a micro USB charging port off to the right side, which seems to be pretty popular for these Alcatel phones. And then we have a microphone. On the right side, we see that we have your power button, followed by and right on top of the power button, we see that we have our volume rockers, which is one piece. And note that the power button is texturized. If my camera will focus, it is texturized, even though my camera won't pick it up. On the top, we have your standard sized headphone jack with a secondary microphone, preferably for noise cancellation. And then on the back, we get your camera, flash to the right of it, Alcatel branding, and your Stray Talk Total Wireless and Track Phone branding right there at the bottom. Let's go ahead and turn the device on. And we see that we have a 5 inch scratch resistant TFT screen with a resolution of 720 by 1280 and a pixels per inch count of 294 which is pretty impressive if you really think about it. Most phones usually at this price point usually come, come in at 480 which that's obviously pretty bad by today's standards and if you tilt this phone granted my brightness is down pretty low but if you do tilt this phone anyway the screen hardly washes out because it is 720p with that said let's go ahead and move on to the system if I fire up CPU Z we can see that this handset runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 1.1 GHz quad-core 210 MSM 8909 chipset with a Cortex-A7 CPU and an Adreno 304 GPU, which by today's standards is no powerhouse when it comes to gaming and things of that nature. You can play games pretty well, but don't expect to play any intense 3D games because you will encounters lag. In terms of the storage on the Alcatel Zip, we get 16 gigabytes of storage with around 9.1 gigabytes available out of the box. But that's just a rough estimate. I could be very wrong on that subject. On top of two gigabytes of RAM, which is very nice for a phone of this caliber. Two gigabytes of RAM makes the phone run pretty smoothly and multitask with ease. A lot of these budget phones still come with one gigabyte of RAM in 2018, which honestly is pretty sad. We should start seeing more of two gigabytes of RAM, if not like one and a half gigabytes of RAM. But for this phone here to have two gigabytes of RAM, Alcatel did a nice job with it. And if we go ahead and fire up Geekbench 4 and take a look at a recent Geekbench 4 test that I ran over here in the history, the score we got was 395 for the single core score and 1051 for the multi-core score. So obviously nothing too powerful here about what you would 
about what you would expect with a processor of this type. Nothing fancy. As for the operating system, this phone runs Android 7.1.1 Nougat with the June 1st 2017 security patch. However, it will probably not get updated beyond 7.1.1 Nougat. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the cameras, both the rear camera and the front camera. So let's fire up the camera application. And go ahead and cover it up. Here's your settings icon. Let's go ahead and take a look at some settings. Photo size, 5 megapixels at 4 by 3 and it goes down from there all the way to 2 megapixels at 16 by 9. Video quality, 720p HD or 480p standard definition. Grid, on or off. Media storage, which can be set to the micro SD card or the internal storage. I do not have an SD card in this phone as of current. Save location information, shutter sound, anti-banding, zoom button, and reset settings. And now if we switch to video mode, let's go ahead and take a look at some settings there. The rear camera can shoot 720p video at 5 megapixels at 4x3, and it goes down from there. Grid on or off, media storage, save location information, shutter sound, anti-banding, zoom button, and reset settings. Basically what we saw with the photo setting. And then you also get panorama, time lapse, and instant collage. And then down here we get your recently taken photos under video. Then we get your camera flip button to switch between the rear and front facing camera. Then up here we get your HDR on or off, timer, 2 seconds, 8 seconds or off, and your flash, auto, on, or off. Let's flip to the front facing camera. And we get a pretty decent 2 megapixel camera on the Alcatel Zip. And as you can see here, we only get your timer right up there. Let's take a look at some settings. Now as you can see, 2 megapixels at 4 by 3 and it goes down from there. Face beauty on or off. Video quality, the front camera can also record in 720p HD and standard definition at 480p. Grid on or off. Media storage, save location information, shutter sound, anti-banding, and reset settings. And lastly, let's go ahead and talk about uh, what kind of settings you get with this phone. So we get Wi-Fi, standard stuff with refresh and advanced and then under advanced we see that we get install certificates Wi-Fi direct WPS push button WPS pin entry and then we get your Bluetooth standard stuff data usage under more we get your airplane mode on or off tethering and mobile hotspot VPN cellular networks and network settings reset scrolling on down under gesture we get turn over to mute which you can mute incoming calls by turning the phone over like so turn over to activate snooze for the alarm Sc screen gestures we get double touch screen which is found with a lot of LG phones which if you can read that there to turn screen on, double tap screen when screen is off. To turn screen off, double tap idle space on home screen. So basically, let me demonstrate that. Does that look familiar? And you can also double tap to turn it on. 
which seems to work much better on this phone than some other LGs I have tested. Get this focus back in here. We get you, and we get your three finger screenshot. Swipe down with three fingers simultaneously to take a screenshot. And there you have it. And you can you can save that, you can share that, you can add some effects to it, and so on. Under lock screen, we get your function options, which if I turn the phone off and turn it back on, they are these down here. I only have the camera and the flash or flashlight enabled, as you can see right there. And you can add all these if you so choose. Search with Google Voice, start the camera, show recent calls, open the calculator, edit function settings, call a contact, set timer, edit wall shuffle settings, take a selfie, record a micro video, start music playlist, compose a message, compose an email, add contact, add event, start sound recording, navigate home, and set alarms. So quite a few options here. For your screen lock, we get none, swipe, which is a current screen lock, pattern, pin, and password. And under the settings, we get your lock screen message, which you can customize to your liking to say anything you like. Under display, we get your brightness level, pretty self-explanatory, and you do have auto brightness. Adaptive brightness, which optimizes brightness level for available light, wallpaper, we get gallery, live wallpapers, photos, wallpapers, and any third-party wallpaper apps you may have. In my case, it's Zedge. Sleep. 15 seconds all the way down to never. Screensaver, which if I go ahead and enable that, we get options for clock, colors, and or photos. But I like to have that feature off. Ambient display, which basically wakes the screen when notifications are received. Font size. Default. Small. Large and largest. Display size. Default. Small or large. When device is rotated, we can either rotate the contents of the screen or stay in portrait view basically orientation lock for Android notifications this is where you basically go through all your apps and set notifications for them sound silent mode on or off ring volume notification volume media volume alarm volume phone ringtone and as you can see right here, we get the option to choose for media storage or your third party app, such as Zedge. Also vibrate for calls, on or off, do not disturb. Default notification ringtone, which is set to success. Mute power on and off tone, which basically if you enable that, you will not hear that track phone sound when it powers on or off. Default alarm volume, or default alarm ringtone, my bad. Emergency broadcast, presidential alerts, show extreme threats, show severe threats, show amber alerts. Alert reminder, once every two minutes, every 15 minutes and off. Speak alert message, vibrate, alert tone, vibration. And under here, you probably can't hear it, but it is vibrating. Show ETWS test broadcast, show CMAS test broadcast, and show opt out dialog. And then other sounds we get dial pad touch tones, screen locking sounds, charging sounds, touch sounds, vibrate on touch, and emergency tone, which can be set to alert, vibrate, and or silent. Apps. We get basically all your apps, and touching these three dots, we can show the system apps. 
and there you have it this is pretty self-explanatory storage I just covered this battery battery saver off never off never turn on automatically battery percentage which I really like on a phone right now I'm sitting at 10 days left because we get an unofficial rating battery rating of 2460 million hours according to Swappa's website which will get you about three to four hours of usage but that will vary depending on how you use it and the battery is non removable which if you don't know go check out my unboxing then you will see that the battery is not removable which isn't a good thing if you need to replace it for any some sort of reason and then down here we get your apps that are basically taking up the battery memory again I already covered this topic we get two gigabytes of RAM location pretty self-explanatory security encrypt phone set up sim card lock make passwords visible device administrators as you can see right there find my device and Android pay unknown sources on, on or off storage type trusted credentials user credentials install from storage and a few that are grayed out screen pinning which if I do a multitasking a gesture we can see that this little icon down here you can basically pin it and the screen is now pinned and it basically says this keeps it in view until you unpin so if I were to like go back home I can't go back home I can't go back into the recent apps I would have to hold down the back button like it said and to unpin the screen long press back screen unpinned which I really like to have apps with usage access accounts Google language and input backup and reset date and time accessibility printing and about phone and that looks like it about covers it for the Alcatel zip LTE review if you found this video helpful and or informative and or enjoyable in any way possible please consider subscribing to the channel it'll be greatly appreciated like this video and turn on post notifications so that you'll never miss when I upload and with all that being said I will see you guys again in the next video